Good evening. It's the uh, Tuesday, September 25th, 2018, meeting of the Walnut Public Library District Board of Trustees. Um, could you please call the roll? Trustee Johnson? Here. Trustee George? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. <laughs> Trustee O'Loughlin? Here. Trustee Barshes? And Trustee Wolf? Wolf. Present. <laughs> okay, uh, first item on the agenda is the approve as uh, the uh, minutes from the August meeting. Could I'm uh, happy to approve those minutes. You want uh, a motion from Stewart to I approve? Second. Lisa seconds. Any discussion? Mm. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The third item on our agenda is um, I'd like to welcome Joan Fishman here to from the Friends to discuss. Um, you know, give us an annual report and tell us what the friends are up to. You'll notice in your distributed to you in your you know your folder um, is their annual report. So if you could have a seat and try to make yes. sure that you are heard. Oh right. Mm -hmm. As good at all possible. Rick, Rick says okay, then we're good. Wonderful. Uh, good evening. Thank you for having me, and I'm delighted to be back and see friends and um, be back. And wanted to give you an update, some of the highlights from last year. Uh, tomorrow, actually, is our first board meeting of the uh, season of the 2018-2019 year. So I would have more tomorrow, but I could give you um, some of the highlights from last year. So. Uh, First of all, as you know, um, this was the, and maybe I need to be corrected, Betty can tell me, um, I believe it's the 13th or 14th year, and I can't recall the, for sure, of, that Friends has supported one book everyone uh -huh. reads. 13th. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And as everyone knows, it was um, a gentleman in Moscow. And as probably everyone knows who was there, it was a standing, well, a, a yeah. It wasn't supposed to be, but there were a few um, out in the hallway, and it was a capacity crowd. So, um, uh, Amor Towles was a delightful speaker and certainly well received, and everyone was just so pleased. So, we so appreciate that that was great visibility for friends of the Wilmette Public Library, as well as a great connection and a collaboration with the um, adult librarians, adult services. So um, we were proud to sponsor that. It was uh, $7,000, which seems to be um, the what we've supported in with that monetary mm -hmm. level um, for the last number of years. And that, of course, goes not only for the um, author to come and present, but all for the uh, programming. And um, this year it was um, everything wonderfully uh, Russian cooking, Russian movies, Russian music, Russian dance. Mm -hmm. So we were delighted again to be part of that and work with the, and have the um, adult services put on such a great program. So delighted. Um, uh, another program that seems to be very positive because we have so much inventory. So we have been very pleased to ramp up all that we can do to share that excess inventory with other communities in need. And I mentioned a number of them on our annual report. But um, Rotary is the recipient of uh, boxes and boxes, primarily of children's books, and that we donate every year. And that's mm -hmm. coming up this always in the fall. Um, a Just Harvest, which is a soup kitchen in Rogers Park, they've been the recipient. And um, I worked there through my synagogue. And um, a few months ago, I was delighted where it was so gratifying that they have a bookshelf. And we've been bringing books for all ages. So not only is someone that families they serve meals, I'll put on a plug for them, 365 yeah. days out of the year, a hot meal at night. But there were kids sitting, eating with a book by their side. Oh, so uh, we continue to do that. They've asked us, you know, they can take as many as we can bring. So that, again, we feel that extends the footprint of our Wilmette um, Kenilworth 
uh, books that we've received. And we've even known now that Evanston has recently closed their um, used bookstore. And so a number of Evanstonians are now coming here in crossing the border in <laughs> from Evanston to Wilmette and um, <laughs> donating books. So we're delighted. And um, I believe also we're getting known through a lot of the estate sales that have gone on when either they're done with the state sales or even prior to the sales, they will bring their books to us. We do have guidelines and we do have recommendations that's on the website of what we are looking for, but um, it's a great way that um, we can serve the community. When the library was under construction, some people are still under the impression that we are um, not taking donations, but after the construction was done, we have gone full full um, course of taking um, any books. So um, one another one is, is a great program called Stand for Children, Illinois, which supports um, schools on the south side. Mm -hmm. And um, they did a summer, they did their own summer reading program and we donated 13 boxes of children's books. And not only did they um, give out children's books, they evaluated the children at what reading level they are, and then they evaluated the books. And so they brought the right reading level with the right child. So they really go that extra mile working with Chicago Public Schools on this program. And again, we were delighted that we could be um, offering the excess inventory that we have. So um, that's a great program, and we continue to work with other, some of the um, women in prison and a whole host of other, other groups. I just wanted to little, um, mention a little bit of a budget. Um, last year, we promised um, 45000 I think it was 45800 um, to the library for programming, and um, we worked closely with um, Barb Griffin to um, uh, pay our, you know, she keeps us up to date with a monthly report. And um, so that was for 2017, 2018 that we, um, we don't just write a check. It's as neat on an as needed basis. But that's what we receive the funding requests from adult services, from youth services and community to fund all the, the programming. Um, this year we've, um, at the funding request, we've um, it was only only which is pretty darn good too, um, twenty eight thousand eight hundred dollars, and um, it was um, decided that there would they wouldn't go for the total amount that we have in the past, but they would um, maybe come back to us and leave some wiggle room for some flexibility if programs came up or funding came up mm -hmm. that they felt that they needed. Um, additional um, support from friends. So uh, we were fine with that, and if that's um, the better way, um, again, as an ad needed basis, we're happy to do that. So again, for the 2018 2019 budget, it'll be $28,800 from friends. Thank you. Uh, so um, I, I just also want to mention. Um, one of the programs that we do fund is the summer reading clubs mm -hmm. for both children and adults. And um, it was very successful, and we feel very um, well money well spent. This year we spent, um, between book giveaways um, and, and youth services, about um, $8,400. Um, not much as that, by any means, um, only about $300 for adult services. But um, I wanted to say that we reached, um, this is from Karen um, Joshi, gave us some numbers. 931 children were signed up for the summer reading program. And then they went out to the Wilmette camps and talked to, and or reached, I should say, 120 children. And I'd like to read to you, I know I shared this with Betty, and it might be in your packet, but I just thought, for the record, this came in through a, a letter from a mom that came in um, as um, through our um, friend's uh, Gmail account. And she says, 
I'll read it quickly. I wanted to say thank you for the gift you gave to, and she gave the child's name. She was part of the Tiny Tots camp and brought home a book gift from Friends of the Wilmot Public Library last week. I was so touched by this. Please know that this is making a positive difference in the community. Despite having copious amounts of books in our house, it's been extremely difficult to get, the girl's name is Emma, interested in reading. Her older sister started reading at age two and is a highly profici proficient reader. But for whatever reason, we've really struggled to get Emma engaged in learning basic phonics and she is far behind her sister. She was so excited about and proud of bringing this book home that we sat down together and read the entire thing cover to cover, with Emma engaged in sounding out the words the entire time. I hope that this is a positive start to a love of reading. Thank you again for the work you're doing. That's really nice. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so, I mean, the That's love great. of reading from a library standpoint <laughs> and the love of reading what we could do to help this little girl feel that ownership with her own book. Mm -hmm. So um, we're delighted to continue to fund this program. And I'm welcome, um, well, happy to take any questions that you might have, but those were some highlights um, of our year. Um, please, I hope that everyone has received an invitation to our annual thank you luncheon mm -hmm. next Friday the 5th at noon downstairs in the auditorium. And if you can join us, please. Some of you, you know, can, can make it, some can, but maybe your schedule will allow it. And. Um, it's our volunteer thank you luncheon, and um, we have about 60 volunteers now, and um, every year they're invited to our luncheon, and every year then we also um, have a little gift for them. Our tote bag was the gift last year. I think everyone got one. <laughs> yes. And then um, we also then offer a, a little Dunkin' Donuts gift card mm. to them at the holidays. Nice. Have, so, have you ever yeah. totaled up the volunteer hours that for people who come it's and work great, there? Great. Well, <laughs> everyone's shift. Um, if they work every week, mm -hmm. and we're open six days a week, mm -hmm. so everyone's shift is two hours. Right. Um, yeah. We. That's a great. It's a great idea because it could be a staggering statistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have subs. I've subbed. Um, it's right. it's a wonderful two hours <laughs> to be down and books down under and just we have music or people come in. Interesting people come in. We have booksellers that come in, very knowledgeable about books, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, the goal is to sell our inventory. We've also been. I should say we've been at. Um, uh, summer Fest, we've been at Go Green Wilmette, mm -hmm. and then we've recently, this summer, also been at the French Market. Mm -hmm. So um, cookbooks and um, fiction are mm -hmm. great. Right. And children's books, mm -hmm. too. Nice. So. Joan, thanks for all that you do, but what are some of the trends that you've noticed in, in terms of with the Friends organization? Is it up well, to um, sort of stable? We've seen that the booksellers, we don't, in the past, we had increased sales from booksellers mm -hmm. who come in, they check the ISBN number, and then they sell them on whatever, if they have a mortar and brick store or online. We are not seeing them as much. Mm -hmm. And they have often told us they don't think our inventory is as extensive as it was in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that people aren't reading books as much and then donating but we've said to them we are only we only have inventory of what is donated so maybe is that reflective of what's going on in larger in the community mm -hmm. um history is always a big sell mm -hmm. um big sellers um cookbooks have been in the past but i think um with so much online um, that people aren't buying cookbooks as much. Um, we used to have CDs. We still do. Those don't sell as much. You know, there's streaming, Spotify, and, and everything else mm -hmm. like that. So those are some of the trends we see. Is your volunteer base stable? Uh, it is stable. We have had, we have one woman that's worked probably the last 20 years. She's in her mid-90s. Oh, wow. So, um, 
We do have devoted volunteers. It's, it's encouraging, other than they're aging, obviously. <laughs> so we need younger volunteers, and it's not often easy. We've tried to um, mention it at one book. We've tried to uh, put something in to the beacon. Um, it's a lot of word of mouth. Um, I often mention it, particularly if, if um, women are there, it's women and men with young children, that if you could get away, it's a great two hours, kind of to yourself. What requirements are there for it to be a volunteer? Are there any? any and nothing. <laughs> just a resident of Wilmette? Uh, um, uh, not no. necessarily, no. We have okay. Evanston so okay. residents. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I must, uh, what that just makes me think, no, there's no, other than following the procedures sure. mm -hmm. that we have. And um, some people open, some people close, um, being able to of change, but we've even tried to streamline things. In the past, we had something might have been 55, I don't know how, why they did this, but it was multiple mm -hmm. change, uh -huh, sure. and we're trying yeah. to uh, keep Let, change. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, we try to say almost everything is a dollar. That mm -hmm. seems to work well, and we do that. We mm -hmm. um, uh, accounted <laughs> for it that way at the sales that we do, the outside sales. One woman who works there, she